Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. As you can see, we're looking at the end game formation guide, a visual guide by White Sushi. If you guys do not know, White Sushi is very, very active on Reddit. He is a community supporter on Reddit, comes out with some absolutely amazing guides. A lot of content and a lot of work and dedication goes into these guides. So I wanted to run through it really quick because if you're not familiar with it on Reddit, please check it out, White Sushi with two eyes at the end. So let's go ahead and we'll do a quick run through the guide. Formations are mostly based on what works, is existing, popular, and tried and tested. When you look at some of the formations in the game and you look at the actual team comps that beat certain stages, a majority of the stages in these team comps are what you will see here. These are the most common team comps that work well in AFK Arena. So we're looking at the meta lineups. These are the main lineups to push chapters 27 through 31. Once you hit chapter 31-4, you will have to start using multiple teams, meaning that building two of these teams is ideal just from the start as you continue to go ahead and build because these are teams you are going to use in the future. So the first one is, of course, Safiya Iran. This is a primary team that I use, as you can see in our top left which is actually right up here. This is the core team that I use, which is Iran, Tassie, Laika, Rowan, and Sophia. Sophia is the core component in both the ultimate and the passive. If you guys do not know, Sophia has four skills that are all very, very strong. Iran has the ability to drag enemies right to the back line, dragging them in the Spectral Disruption. The Spectral Disruption is very, very powerful because it reduces both the haste and the attack rating of the heroes that are in there, making Iran crazy, crazy high damage, and it increases his survivability. You have Laika in this combination for her boost with her energy and her haste, plus her defense reduction. Tassie is there for CC and support. Same with Rowan, CC and support. Sophia, the same, does a lot of damage. Falling Sun ability does a lot of damage. And she also does have Scatterbolt. If you look at some of the counters, another counter for this one is Nara. Reason is Nara will drag another hero or a third hero into, or essentially a fourth hero into the Spectral Disruption, making the team a little bit more effective. And that way you can specifically target one hero that is in either the, the third or the fifth slot so you can bring them in. Um, Multi-Fight is a very interesting because it utilizes Titus and Scarath. So this actually gives you the 3-2 bonus. Um, Titus and Scarath I do not have built, so this is a combination that I have not used. But overall, it seems very, very powerful um, because remember, Scarath will pull all the heroes together, especially if they have if he has the three set bonus um, for his furniture. And Titus allows for a CC as well, and he is a finisher, meaning that when heroes do get low, um, he has the ability to finish them. Second team comp that we look at is the Gwen combo. This is the combo that I usually run on my Light Bearer account. This is the um, combination that I run on my main account. Gwyneth is the mage, main damage dealer. All heroes there are there to buff her damage. So when you combine Rose and Gwen, Gwen can do super, super high continuous damage, which is very, very powerful. Arthur adds an addition to that. So when you add him in with his aura, he raises the normal attack rating of both Gwen and Rose that are right behind him. Like a further builds on that with her energy and with her haste buff to begin. And Arthur is an absolute phenomenal tank. He can face tank a majority of heroes when it comes to face to face because he has his shield and he has damage mitigation. I do like the alternative as well, running Arthur with Gwen and Rowan behind him because essentially in the alternative formation, Rose is gonna move up to Gwen. You're gonna have the haste buff on Gwen. You're gonna have it on Rowan. You're gonna have it on Rose and then um, Pharrell is there to provide additional crowd control. Other variation, as you can see for the multi-fight, I've run this comp as well since Nakaruru. I've actually run it with Taylene instead of Estrilda, which was kind of a big, big damage soak. So these two specific comps I have used and I have used very, very successful. They are tried and true. 
I, I've used these. My free to, or my um, pay to win account uses the Sophia Eron combo. My main account uses Gwen. My Light Bears use Gwen. So very, very tough combinations. Next combination we look at is the Damon comp. So this one is relatively new as Damon is one of the newest heroes. Damon is pretty much a one man army against enemies with low damage output. He can even put in the front line. His furniture is broken. His signature item is broken. Um, he does more damage than pretty much any other hero in the formation. As we seen a little bit earlier today with my live stream, Damon did more damage than every single person in our formation. And we actually ran uh, some of the Damon comps here, replacing Thorin with Taylene because we don't have Thorin built, but running the Pharrell, Nara, Damon with Rowan and Taylene was a very, very strong comp. The alternative here, of course, Wukong. Wukong is very strong if he alts. He's very difficult to deal with. Athelia for additional CC. So essentially you have Pharrell doing crowd control, you have Nara doing crowd control, you have Athelia doing crowd control, you have Wukong who can just tank just about everybody, and then Damon who is there for the damage output. So Taylene, Gorbo, even Oden work in this formation. This one I would love to see for the multi-fight using Ezio with Mizoth. Seems like a very, very interesting combination. So if this is one that you do use, um, I don't have these heroes built enough together to go ahead and use it, but it seems like it would be a very, very tough combination to deal with. Next one we look at is the God Tier Comp. The God Tier Comp, as we know, this is a S plus comp. Um, this is the second comp that I run on my main account. So also known as the Lockout Team. So if you look, Taylene is the primary DPS here, but you get a super fast cycle rotation between the twins and their haste. Aziz with his energy regeneration. Mahira brings her own energy regen with a plus 30 signature item. Rowan brings his uh, energy potions as well as his health potions. Taylene relies on healing, but you can cycle through the, the abilities, skills and abilities very, very fast with this team, and that's kind of the reliant on it. Um, th they can cycle through so fast that heroes can't cast their alt. Mahira just spams mind control, while Taylene continues to just use haste as her alt, making this team super effective because you can lock out the other teams. The alternative, this is a little bit of a cheaper version of it because if you don't have Mahira and Aziz built, Mahira is kind of a supercharged Tassie um, because she allows all the heroes to attack themselves and do additional damage versus just going to the, to the slumber. And then also with Pharrell, you may not get the energy that Aziz is bringing, but you do get Pharrell, which can reduce the enemy's energy. Other one that I seen which was an interesting was Saurus in here. Um, Saurus with an extended fight, especially if he alts, can heal your team and keep your team at complete full health with his plus 30 signature item. And he does do a significant amount of damage, especially because the twins will be casting frequent haste on him and allowing him to stack his ability very, very high. So the next one that we look at is the Thorn Cheese. I have tried this comp quite a few times, not very successful at all, but it just relies on Thorin, Thorin having his plus 30 signature item, which adds a second shot, so a second ability to actually wipe the entire team. So if you look at the team, you have Eron pulling heroes in, you have Nara pulling heroes in, some people use Lorzen, which is the alternative here, but everything relies on stacking heroes around Thorin. Also, if you do have his set bonus for his furniture, when he fears, he actually brings the heroes in closer, making the Thorin Cheese effectively stronger because you'll have more heroes put together. So everything kind of relies. Um, some Another additional one that a lot of people use is, of course, Kalthar. Kalthar is the other one because, remember, he switches places with heroes. Athelia does the same. So when Athelia does her judgment ability, she actually pushes the hero back to the enemy side, further stacking them on Thorin. The whole idea behind this is to stack every single enemy on Thorin so he can go ahead, take a lot of damage, 
it has heavy, heavy RNG, but when he takes a lot of damage, his retaliation ability will push the damage back out, essentially killing the enemy team. Big thing with the Thorn Cheese is there is no real level deficiency, because if you can get this ability to work, usually you wipe the enemy team, which makes it very easy. The next combination we look at is the Eron Comp. Now this is the combination that I've run on my Wilder team, um, which a little variation because I don't run Rowan considering it is straight Wilders. I run Eron with Laika, with Tassi, with Nomura, and Saurus. It's kind of the, the difference between it. Um, I know here we have Rose, that way Rose can go ahead and focus on Eron, allowing Eron to essentially do more damage and cast multiple, multiple tornadoes while we have the energy and the haste buff from Laika. And of course, the CC that Rowan provides and the healthy supplies ability and Tassie with the CC as well. The second alternative with Zolrath is really interesting. Zolrath is another hero that unfortunately I haven't had an opportunity to build. But again, that team comp looks pretty interesting. Um, Eron by himself can also have better crowd control options with this freeze, which can chain better with Tassie's sleep. Dropping Sophia also allows you for more alternative burst options in the form of Zolrath, even Athalia, both benefiting from Laika, um, which can be enough to close the fights. So again, interesting combination on it. I do love the final multi-fight combination because Saurus does bring quite a bit. It brings the um, essentially the 4-1 bonus. So having four Wilders together because Saurus with the haste buff and the CC. So you figure in this team combination, you have Tassie providing crowd control. You have Eron providing crowd control. You have Frel doing energy disintegration and you have Frel doing crowd control. So the combination of the team will work very well. Remember, once you get to chapter 31, you need multiple teams meaning you need multiple gear sets, you need multiple heroes built, 10 in total, plus you need multiple signature items um, unlocked and leveled up to at least a plus 30, plus 30 ideal, plus 20 on some heroes, plus 30 on others is ideal for the fights. So down here, White Sushi does also give some honorable mentions, which are pretty interesting combinations. Izold. Izold is a hero that scales really, really well. Most people have never used him nor ever built him until the viability with the 3 of 3 furniture and also his plus 30 signature item makes him immune to crowd control. So that is absolutely huge. Not only does he scale, his 3 set bonus allows him to do more damage over time. So the longer that he's up, the longer he survives, the more damage he's going to do. So essentially looking at this team, you have Pharrell for crowd control, you have Mahira for crowd control, Nara for crowd control, Rowan can play crowd control, while Izold can run around and kill everybody, which is absolutely crazy because again, his scaling is that high. Second one, of course, is Gorvo. Gorvo is another hero I used long before the rework. He was super, super RNG. But now I've heard he is very solid when it comes to the stuns and the shields. Um, this is actually Anthros, and a big shout out to him from Discord. Shared the line lineup with White Sushi, kind of a lockout early CC team. Um, notably, the players need three furniture on Skarath and the call on Gorvo. So the idea behind this is Gorvo just going ahead and ulting. That way he can keep all the heroes stunned while Skarath keeps everyone together. Eron keeps everyone together to maximize his damage. Next one we look at is Shamira. Um, Shamira has been replaced is what a lot of people have seen. As you start getting further into the campaign, Shamira does usually fall off. It takes a while for her to alt, and even the alt with her damage over time needs a better scaling. It needs to be able to do more damage in a shorter amount of time. Next comp we look at is Belinda. Belinda, this is the comp I ran on my main account. This is the comp that I run on the Light Bear account, if you have not seen it. Belinda with Rose double alt with her ability just absolutely melts heroes. Non-stop absolutely melts heroes. 
Plus you throw in for, or Falks in there. Falks provides CC, Lucius provides heals, Andy provides shields, as well as Rowan with his crowd control, with his um, ultimate ability to get energy and stuns, as well as healthy supplies, makes the Lightbearer team very, very powerful. Couple other interesting ones here, as you can see, Satrana. Satrana's niche of heal reduction coupled with high damage output and decent survivability, which since her rework, people have started using her because her signature item increases her survivability. Before you would start a battle, she would run out, absolutely die, and that's it, the battle would be over. But if you look at the team comp that he's running here, with this combination, Orthos and Zolrath do have the um, union bonus now, and they're both very, very powerful in their own right, but also very, very expensive to build, meaning that you gotta have them leveled up, you gotta have them ascended, you have to have their signature items pretty much maxed out at a plus 30 to make this team really, really effective. Kazard is the next one. His signature item increased the duration of negative buff effects, making Mahira and Tassi more potent. Remember, Mahira does a mass mesmerize AoE plus Pharrell's spirits, which is increased by Kazard. So Tassi as well with the slumber ability, the banish ability, and also Rowan bringing a additional survivability to the team as well as crowd control. Subs, some subs, as you can see here, Arthur and Nakaruru. Nakaruru, I absolutely love. She seems like such a solid hero. I use her in a lot of team comps and she performs very, very well. So the second to last is Flora. A lot of people have never built Flora nor used Flora. Flora is unkillable source of damage. As we know, when you use Flora, she actually flies up in the air. She is untargetable. But in return, she cannot get any of the buffs that your team gets um, because she is up in the air. So this team really focuses on both Taylene and Orthos and their survivability, allowing Flora to stay up in the air um, to, to essentially do damage while they stay alive. Because remember, if Taylene dies, if by chance she takes fatal damage, she will be reborn with a rebirth. Um, so she will come back, allowing Flora again to stay up in the air. Um, this is also a PvP lineup, but the PvE variant tends to run Daemon more than Flora. So essentially dropping out Flora, adding in Daemon, you'll probably see a lot more success. The final team is Generic Tank and Spank, so using Solus. A lot of players do not have Solus built, just like Flora, just like Kazard. Um, Isold Gorvo kind of heroes one off that I don't see very many people using nor having built or developed. So Generic Tank and Spank built to keep Solus alive and have her do all of the damage. Her Floral Spectre does a lot of damage if you can keep it alive. That's really the big thing. I run her at a plus 30 signature item with her three set bonus, um, three furniture bonus, which is, is a big investment as you can see here. But overall, because even if the Floral Spectre dies, it turns to a Spectre form and still does damage. So essentially, as long as you can keep her alive, the Floral Spectre will be doing damage if it's alive or if it's dead, plus her plus 30 signature item hits three heroes. So not only when she casts her alt does it do a lot of damage, it allows her Floral Spectre to start doing damage as well, which is awesome to see. Got a lot of credits here. Um, a lot of it was formations used, as you can see, from 27 to 34. Tons of screenshots. Like I said, White Sushi does absolutely phenomenal as a community supporter for Reddit and for AFK Arena. It is crazy. I will put a link to his guide in the description below. It's very cool to see a lot of kind of niche characters with Izold and with Gorvo, Satrana that, like I said, a lot of people don't use. But looking here at the team comps, the Eron comp I run, the God comp I run, Damon comp I run, Safia, Iran, and Gwen, I run all of these team comps, so I can definitely attest to the build, how well they do. Um, Safia, Iran, like I said, I run on the pay to win account. Gwen, I run on the main account. I do run that also on the light bear account. Damon, I run on the pay to win account. God comp, I run on my main account. 
And then also the Eron comp is on the Wilder team. So again, I can attest for these and I can vouch for this. White Sushi put so much effort into creating these guides. So definitely give him some big props. I know he's gotten an insane amount of pearls from this last event, which I'm so, so excited and so happy to see. But again, looking at the lineups, these are the teams you're going to use. So as you continue to progress, these are the teams that progression are going to build. Heroes you want to focus on, signature items you want to focus on, furniture that you want to focus on. That way when these heroes do hit Ascended, you have them leveled up, you have their signature items maxed out, you have their furniture bonuses, because these are the heroes that are going to carry you through AFK Arena. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Again, White Sushi, absolute phenomenal job on the formations guide. This is probably the most important information that you can provide for AFK Arena because the sooner that you're focused on teams, the sooner that you're building heroes, you're not wasting resources on other heroes, signature items, emblems, um, getting furniture for heroes that are not in these team comps because these are the priority. So again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thank you, White Sushi, again for the guides and everything you do for AFK Arena. And as always, thank you guys for watching.